What's up guys? I was gonna get into loops at the end of the video, but I guess I had more to say about arrays than I expected, and I realized the video was getting a bit long. So now this is its own video, we're gonna talk about loops, and you can see I have some code already set up, and I'm gonna print this out just so you can see what these lists are. Okay, so like the previous video, this is a list of evens and odds, where it's one if it's odd, and then zero if it's even. And then another one is just sequential from one to 20. And then this one is doubling every from one to 20, the two, four, six, eight. Okay, so we're all good there. And now we're gonna do some looping. All right, so loops are pretty similar syntax to what you see here for i in whatever. And in within the for loop, we can do well, tons of stuff. So I'm going to start out for i in r. And let's say we want to start messing with L2. So L2, and each element we want to change where we double them as well. Okay, you can see I'm doubling it in a different fashion compared to how L3 is also doubled. So I'm going to comment that out. I'm going to see L2 and L3 printed out, and then I'm going to print out L2 again. And then we'll go into what's, what's happening. All right, so L2, this is L2 initially. This is L3. You know, you saw that it was multiplied by 2 in this fashion and created this array. And then this is L2 again after it got changed by this for loop. Now, what this for loop is doing is this index is going through R, and R is defined from 1 to 20. So, at 1, 2, 3, 4. So, L2 at the first element of L2, we're going to add i. Now this statement here is the exact same thing if I were to write this. i plus i. It's a bit of a shorthand where you're saying I want to take the value of this variable and just add this extra bit. Which So rather than rewriting the variable and adding the bit you can just do this plus equals and you're saying you want to add that. You could do the same if you want to do a minus equals or um, multiplication equals or division equals. They all do the same sort of fashion where you want to multiply it by this factor or add or subtract or whatever. And you can see this is the same exact thing. L2 came out as L3. It was just a different way to double through the array. Another way we can use for loops is we can use it to iterate through a list. So you can see my L4 here has words here, hello, how are you? Now, before I was pulling out the numbers from these containers, but now in this case, I'm going to pull out these strings. And I can do that by for word in L4 print word. End. Look, it, uh, it printed out each word, hello, how are you? And that was pretty simple. So if you wanted to use the, the stuff in the container rather than treating it as an index, because I could also do it like this for i in, I can go from the size of L4 l4 comma 1 now these this is going to give i a set of numbers and i can now do print l4 index of i and we want these to be separated so i'm just going to put a space here okay yeah you can see print out the same exact thing, right? This is where I was actually accessing. This was the accessing already. 
where this word is these individual indices, while this is giving me a number, and I'm using that number to access the array. And this is how I'm accessing it. But they both, they both accomplish the same thing. So it depends on how you want to go about it. If you need the index for a couple cases, then maybe you want to code this way because you have to use i in a couple other situations. Or if you just need to simply go through the list and pull the stuff out on your own, then this, this also works out. Whichever you need. Okay, now the next part I want to go into is while loops. Now, while loops work more with logic, kind of similar how if statements work, and require some sort of case for, for it to be broken out of. So let's set that up. i equals zero while i is less than 5, print do print ln i i plus equals 1 and end. Okay, now before I run this, this is actually going to give me an error and it's going to be this statement right here. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment right now, but first I'm going to run this. Okay, so in here you're going to see it says assignment to i in soft scope is ambiguous because global variable by the same name exists i. And then it goes on to talk about the new local. Alright, so this is now getting to talks of local scope and global scope and so it's another computer science area. So what's going on here is this i is global to the rest of the code. Everything underneath this code has access to it. So this while has access to this i, but within this while, we also have this i here. And this i is redefining the, the previous i, this global i, with this local i. So saying like this is this is a global i and right now this is a local i these are two different i's and the way that we can get over this is we would actually have to call this global global i plus equals one now this wouldn't give me an error because this is now saying the global variable i the one out here i want to change this by one every time. I comment that out. That should be good. And now if I run this. Okay. And you see this time it works. You got zero, one, two, three, four. And it iterated fine. And then the while loop part works by every time you add one to this, it keeps on checking this case. First it's zero, it's fine goes around, now it's one, it's fine, two, and then once it gets to four, four becomes five, five is not less than five, breaks out and continues on. And that's pretty much how a while loop works. While loops you wanna use when you're uncertain how the case is gonna end. In mathematics, maybe you have a tolerance or an error that once you hit that tolerance, you wanna break out, which is stuff that I'll be covering in a different series, or maybe you're Thinking about user input, if a user hits the Q button for quit, then that's when it quits out and you have a while statement. While the user hasn't hit that Q button, it just keeps on running all the code. Oops, did not mean to do that. <laughs> so while statements works for cases of uncertainty. You don't know how, or you don't know when the code is going to exit out, so you set up this while statement to give a chance for you to exit out. Now, if you didn't have this, this would just run forever. So you need to have something so it doesn't run continuously because then it'll run up till how much memory you have and then it'll crash. Okay, one last thing I wanna go into is nested for loops. So I'm gonna find another array, I have a three by four. 
and let's see first two four C and one to size of the uh, two or R and one two of one and first we're just going to access it so row column equal to or word plus equals c and end and then we're going to display y z okay i'm going to print this out and then we'll go into it All right, so first you can see here, I defined this zeros array. So it's just a array of zeros going, uh, that's a three by four. And then I made this nested for loop. So when you're coding, you want to avoid a nested for loop as much as you can. The more loops you have, the more computations your code is going to be running. And if you're running a nested for loop, it's just going to be doubling all your computations. And this is something that you want to avoid, but sometimes you can't. So if you can't avoid it, this is, this is how you code it. So you can see from an earlier video, I mentioned that Julia is column dominated, column oriented when it's with this memory. So it's good to go through its column, columns first. So I have four C for column and one to size, the size of this array. And then I have four R and one to size of this array. So this is accessing its first dimension, this is accessing, accessing its second dimension. And then within this for loop, I'm going to be accessing each element. So the Rth and Cth element of this Z array, and I'm going to be adding C to it, and then end end. So because I'm just adding C, each column is just going to be added that column number. So this is the first column, which adds one, column two, column three, column four. If I want to change this to R, it would just flip. You can see one, row one, row two, row three. Cool. And then let's say I just wanted to add R plus C. And it's just going to be the addition of these two arrays. You can see and add all the values up together. Okay, so that's a nested for loop. Sometimes you can't avoid it and you have to code up something like this. That's why matrix multiplication is a pretty heavy computation. So is pretty much anything with matrices. But if you can't avoid it, try to. <laughs> and that's pretty much the end of this video. The next one, I'll be going into plotting and that will pretty much be the end of this basic series.